for some, some time, we've been expressing difficulty. I've been seeing our clients a few weeks ago. Our, our lawyers, we are, uh, we are kind of uh, terrified and embarrassed. Uh, they, we are kind of uh, stiff naked in the course of doing the visit to our client. So I'm saying this with every sense of honesty and sincerity. Lawyers, we are subjected to inhuman treatment. They were such as if they were searching criminals with incriminating object or substance. They were not, not allowed to move in to usual convenient, uh, conventional way you just visit our client. They were, removed their, they were asked to remove their shoes. They were subjected to all forms of risking and such. They were asked to remove their watch, their belt, their, their wrist watch, the bangles, then their ties too. So these are, these are things they were asked to remove right inside the offices. So, and at the point of now trekking to where you are supposed to meet our client, people, the onlookers will see you as people who are being investigated. We see as common criminals who are usually brought in the trial department for investigation. So this treatment has been ongoing, at least for three consecutive times we visited. So before the last visit of Thursday, uh, our partner from UK, from US came, Bruce Fenn came. So, and of course, we have taken it a step further by notifying the DSS about the persons who are coming to visit before time, each time we're going to visit, because that actually is not part of the order of court. But we are doing that to make sure that um, we have records, and also they have records of people who are coming to visit him. So we notify them at least for eight hours of their about before the date of visit. So we've done it, we did it in the case of, um, in case of um, Bruce Fenn, that we notified him, the authority that were coming there with, he's coming there with me to see the visit the client, his client, uh, whom he has been representing in US. So. Only for us, and also I want him to use that opportunity to also observe uh, what we are passing through in the hands of the service. Uh, so, um, which apparently suggests in the circumstance that our client will not get a fair trial in the trial. So, otherwise, unless it's removed from that department. So, do we have an application before the court for him to be taken to a conventional place where we, we have access to him, prepare for his trial, and also proceed in court? So, but on Thursday, we are there, and uh, in line with the protocols, they were informed that we are around to see our client. Only for, after a few minutes, somebody came to see us panting. Obviously, it was a pregnancy or a fire that they are scouting for excuse to give us. So, all written over him. So, he now told us that um, people who are to receive us, person who are receive us, has gone on a special assignment, and as such, we can't, can't, be, can't see, visit our clients today. So, this is another of court. We're not visiting our client on Mondays and Thursdays at the discretion of the SSS. That's not the position. The position that the court has given an order that we should visit him Mondays and th Thursdays. And uh, by there is nothing whatsoever that will stop us from doing this, complying with this order of court. So anything short of that will amount to breach of order of court, which they did deliberately in the circumstance. However, we have taken steps to inform the court, communicate the court about development. Of th on Thursday, and also uh, we have also activated the judicial process towards ensuring that people who are found culpable in this regard are charged, are charged, in, charged for content of court, because it's clear content of court. So court made an order directed how to see when and how to see the client. Yeah, it's not within your rights, within your discretion to tell us that someone who is to receive us on this day to see our client is not there to receive us. After we have them in their numbers there who are serving there. And as a matter of fact, let it be mentioned here or pointed out here that we haven't been received by one person in, during the course of this visit. No, there are many of them there who can receive us and also take, take us to our client to have a chat with him. Particularly when this matter is far the date for hearing is far approaching. So, and also against the backdoor, the fact that his lawyer from US is here to see him. So, and remember the order of court says that lawyers will be allowed access to him, including his relatives. So that's such a we found ourselves. That's now, as, as, now, you know. now, has this been happening? Remember, in, you know, for, for clarity for viewers watching us, mm -hmm. the, the moment the court made that order, that is uh, Justice Binta Nyako, that was actually, was not obeyed immediately. Is that correct? There sure, was it wasn't delay. obeyed. 
Okay. No, no, not, 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 let, let me correct an impression because uh, mm. it, it, this shouldn't, shouldn't be the first time it's happened. It, mm. The court made an order on a Monday, being 26th of July, 2021, that's stipulating the, the, the manner in which to be seen we are, to visit our client. So, and parties were there. When I mean, when, I, when I'm talking about parties, I mean lawyers for the federal government, lawyers for the defendant, and also representatives of the SSS were also there when the guideline was agreed upon. The court proceeded to even write something, scribble something down and give it. So I cannot say that we are not informed. Now, on Thursday was the date we went for visit. Thursday should be, should be apparently 29th, right? 29th of uh, July, we went for visit. On that day, we are turned back. We are asked to go and fight officially to the DGSSS. So, and we didn't hesitate in approaching why, why were you turned back? Is it that the DSS was not aware that the court made that order or that they have actually, that they are above the law? In all, fa in all fairness, in all fairness to them, the personnel of the ES DSS, I mean, in this case, I mean the legal permit, confirmed to us on that day that they were aware of this order of court. They confirmed to all they were away. But as it stands now, we should go back and formally write to the DHSS. I said, okay, if you are aware of this error of court, why do you expect us now to write again? You said you are we informed, you are briefed about what the court said on the guideline for visiting our client. Then why ask us to go back again and write? Then we we'll have to go back to the court. Immediately after we left the place, five from 48 and seven of them. So upon the receipt of form 48, that was when they did Netflix and asked us to come back on Monday. So we decided to keep the suspend the process, the process since they've asked us to come back on Monday to visit our client. So now, of what happened on Thursday now has activated the entire process, process, which we are also on it now. Is there anything that has that happened in between the time you've been visiting your client that would warrant? Because anybody watching now will think. You know, this is entirely unacceptable for something like this to happen that lawyers will now be stripped down like criminals being taken into prison before they could go see their client. Was there anything that suggests that there could be an incident that happened that may have warranted this level of treatment to lawyers? Lawyers. I can confirm to you now, Marzi, that nothing whatsoever has happened. Now, for the records, from the first day we started visiting our client till they introduced the style of treating us like criminals before seeing him, we, ha we, are, we, are, we are usually being subjected to search. Of course, we on. They will search us before having a meeting, seeing him. They will search us. They will ask us to look at, we'll check our pockets, search us roundly. But we're not complaining about it. It's normal. No more protocol. We're not, we're not worried about the father that's touching us. Even the in, this meeting, before... no, no. In, in this meeting, uh, the DS officers, are they normally around when these meetings occur? Or are they just leave you no, guys no, no, in no. the room? No, 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 no. They will search us first of all. They will make sure we're okay. They will search everything we thought in our, in our, in our, in our, in our what, whatever mm. we're wearing. When we're wearing shoes, they'll make sure we'll search your clothes, search your trousers and everything, which is normal. And I know it's a, it's a lawyer client discussion. It shouldn't be there. And I also have a discussion with him as to the strategies we're adopting, we're adopting his case, it shouldn't be there. We don't go mm. into a small room. Uh, whether that room is, um, uh, we'll go into a small room and have a meeting with him, simple, or nothing more. And they've not, at any point in time, found in us any form of object, either paper or anything suggesting that we, are, we have compromised the security of the place. Not whatsoever. Maybe we start, they've, been, they've been regularly subjected us to such Normally, and we're not complaining. No, you've not, you've not had anybody of us complain about that because it's normal. But ask us to remove our slippers, remove our shoes, uh, remove our shoes, uh, ties, our wristwatch, and reduce us to, 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 this, to the rank of criminals. Uh, it's what we find on as intolerable and unacceptable as lawyers. So we've not, been, we've not seen this before. We've not witnessed this before. And I don't think it should be the height of, uh, height, of uh, 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 height of embarrassment. It should be height of embarrassment. Yeah. Now, if something like this will happen to you and your other, uh, um, you know, colleagues who have involved in this case, what do you do? Uh, I mean, have the family members been able to see him in DSS custody? Were they also subjected to this level of search? No, the first time the 
the junior brother came visiting. He said him, I was I went there with him and uh, he was uh, routinely charged in line with their protocol, not what we are seeing today. So and uh, he, we he saw his brother. We had a meeting with, we have a discussion with him. General discussion with him and left. Nothing more. So and since they introduced this style of um, stripping us down and all what, so I don't think uh, you know, nobody has come. None of them has come around apart from what happened on Thursday when I went went there with um, a Bruce, uh, Bruce friend who came okay. all the way from US to see his line. And I mean, a couple of weeks back, I had uh, with Chidi of a uh, worship media. I had an interview with Bruce Finn where he announced that he was going to come. In that interview, I did, you know, raise, you know, I, I mean, as, as usual, because, listen, we have seen a, not, a lot of things happen in this government that nothing is of the hook. That, you know, I said, well, I, in terms of his security, which is personally most paramount. Now, he now, and um, I think he's, he's indeed a brave man. He, he, he braved it. He's here. And you people went, you said, on Thursday to see his client. Yeah. And the so, DSS still denied you access of seeing him. Is that correct? Sure. Yes. Yes. So their excuse, if I understand the interview you had yesterday in your office oh. with Soare, which Soare streamed, helped us uh, stream live. Um, sure. Again, mention about Soare. I will say, may the soul of his brother rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. He tweeted yeah. this morning that his brother was killed by suspected sure. headsmen. Yes, when he was leaving, this yeah, I've I've rang him twice. I haven't. Uh, he didn't pick. I assume he's oh. obviously going to be busy. But again, oh. may the soul of his brother rest in peace. And that's a biological younger brother. That's he very must well, be well. in a very terrible condition as we speak. But having mm -hmm. said that, in that interview yesterday, you know, uh, it was said that um, the reason they gave was that there was no one to go escort you people to go see him. What manner of excuse is that? Do you have one person dedicated to doing this or couldn't anybody who is there escort you to go see your client? Well, the, 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 the only question begging for answer in this point in at this point in time is one thing. One, we have been visiting our clients. We've gone there regularly to see him. What they have to answer you if you can ask them or call them? Has there been any occasion when a person, an individual, receives us? The answer is no. From the office, during the course of it, seeing our client. Not one individual, not even two, not three. Will be re being received by different persons, not even one. So, we've been being received by a different person. One, two, three, four different persons have been receiving us. So in this case, they told us that the individual who's supposed to receive us went on a special assignment. So, so I, I, don't, I don't want to, of course, you know, the excuse is not more or less ridiculous. So I want to go into the merit or otherwise. Of course, you know, they are trying to, they are trying to scout him for there's something to tell us to go. That's all. So but let's wait and see what happened on Monday. So they're going so back on the, you... we're going back on Monday. Okay, so you're going back on Monday to see him, sure, and um, sure. fingers fingers crossed. He, obviously, that excuse because if they come up with another excuse, mm. it will now be very obvious, even visible to mm. the blind and audible to the deaf. Sure, sure, sure. sure. No, I will not you know, have any apart from apart from this tenth of the ninth of July, uh, two thousand and uh, where they denied all access to him. I don't think afterwards we have not seen him. We've been once gone, we feel if they will notify them about our, 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 our present, they will call them and allow us in, check us and search us. And we're going normal, usually. We never had any concerns, we never have any like, challenge visiting him, discussing with him, seeing him before, since then, afterwards. You have made an application in so, the court. until. Sorry, you made an application. Again, sorry, to, pardon. You, you've made an application to the court for your clients mm. to be moved to Kuje prison. Now, when is that hearing sure, yeah. for that matter coming up? And why, you know, obviously there is no decision that will be made until the court says otherwise that your client should be moved to Kujia prison. Uh, of course, you know, the matter will adjourn to October 21st for, for hearing. And these are pending applications the court will start to dispose of before going into the substantive uh, trial. So uh, once that court seat, anytime court seat, if court seat or not before then, that should be the first application court to entertain because it's very compelling. 
in the circumstance we presently find ourselves. Because if that is not uh, uh, taken and probably uh, rule in the term of the merit, I don't think it will affect a number of things we are doing in court. Particularly our relationship with our client as regards to where he's being presently kept. Because if he's not, if you don't have access to him, if you cannot have briefs with him, as in pre-trial conference with him, under a polite environment, that means he cannot be effectively defended. So we cannot, he can't be interviewed under an atmosphere of fear and the uh, intimidation. That's not, it, it, can't, it, can't, it can't happen. I can assure you it can't happen. There's no trial will go on under that kind of environment. That it cannot happen. I can assure you. Because as far as concerned, Nandi Khan has not been convicted. He's still presumed innocence in the eyes of law. So he's entitled to all facilities available to him to prepare for a trial. That's what the constitution says. The constitution which they are still respecting and observing today. So if they cannot uh, allow him benefit to have the brief of this provision of the constitution, that means no trial will go on. I can I, I can say that to the whole world at this time point in time. Okay, so but uh, before I allow we go, I know you are very busy. I know that other things, as you told me, that is uh, happening around you. But before I allow you go, it would be unfair to have have the privilege of bringing on this platform, and without you telling millions of people watching and those that were watching after this program, what is the state of health and state of mind of your client? Well. I will first of all address the state of health, but state of mind is firm, stable, firm, stable, firm, stable, state of mind, sound, firm, stable. Then now, coming to state of health, we are privy to the fact, which is now before the court, is now within the public domain, that he was abducted in Kenya, kept in a, an environment, unconventional environment, taken to a, 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 residential, a private residential apartment, where he was subjected to all forms of inhuman treatment. Torture. They inflicted him with all sort of injuries in his body. So he's still yet to recover from that, from the injuries inflicted on him and torture he underwent. Now, he's still being subjected to torture today. I can confirm that to you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on here. You mean, as he sees today, he's still being subjected to physical torture? Yeah. No, I mean, he's still being subjected to torture. Okay. So call it mental torture in the circumstance. Okay. Because okay. he is being kept in a place he doesn't have access to anybody. He's there alone. He doesn't watch television. He doesn't have somebody to talk to. And uh, he's still on treatment. I, I, I may make sense to you. So yes. he's still on treatment. So that's why we are asking the court to make an order. Because we're in court now. We have found applications to that effect. For an advanced medical, well, we're going to for an advanced medical attention to be given to him. We want experts to come and thoroughly examine him and understand what actually happened to this man. Because we need to know. So yeah, but, we shouldn't but, rely on the record. I'm coming. We shouldn't rely on the medical record being given to us by the by the DSS. No, the answer is no. We need an independent medical expert to give him attention, overhaul him medically. Then let us know the state of his health. Well, somebody may be sick, you will not know. You'll be looking to him, you look at him and be chatting with him, you tell you everything is okay, you may not know. Until when independent person now go through him and also examine him professionally, the person will now have probably a different view about his medical state of his medical state of health. I would mean. You so know, that's the application before the court now. So you know, and uh, until oh. sorry, go ahead, Con conclude your thought. Go, go. I, I mean the application is before the court now. It's part of part of the question we have before the court, awaiting the court for announcement on that. So because we, we, we want that to be done like yesterday. We want that to be done like yesterday. We want a medical expert. He has many he has, he has a number of uh, experts who are managing him before he was abducted. So at least one person should be allowed to have access to him and examine him. Let's have the medical history of what happened to him. This man nearly died in the hands of people, criminals that abducted him. And, and it's worth saying that he's still being subjected to an environment that exposes him to dangers. So these are things we should understand. And, 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 and until when an independent person, medical expert, is a man him, who cannot confirm to the world that none can, is perfectly held and happy. I would okay. mean so I, 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 I perfectly understand, but he, again, health, they say, is wealth. If 
you know, I understand the application you have made, which is, you know, standard and that should be done. He should be moved to a facility where, you know, he should have unfettered access. But before, because obviously we are still in Nigeria, we, we, everything hasn't started working the way they ought to. Now, if bearing all these things in mind, is it not possible to have these medical experts, even it means going into the DSS facility as of today, and do okay. these things you are still, or if, if, if there are any concern, uh, hopefully it is not going to be late until the court decides he comes into prison before they can come in. So can't this be done now rather than later? Well, uh, as it stands now, we have taken a number of steps I may not like to discuss in public in that okay. regard, and um, because uh, we can't do anything without reference to court. Of course, you understand how the system works here. So, and uh, once the court is not involved formally in anything you're asking them to do, they will find this, they will have the one they have, they will have a little excuse to give you. So, um, we have done, taken some steps I may not like to discuss in the public mm -hmm. domain, uh, for the public. So, and I believe in the course of time that um, I'll make some things for me. I, be, I will believe in the course of time I'll make it public when necessary. But now, as it's down, I will leave it as, as it is. So, uh, regarding the efforts we're making to get an expert to examine him, Things are being we are taking we are taking step in that direction. So I mean, but I'm not ready to discuss the soft and submit otherwise invite this part from for now, but I may discuss that later because of time. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, before I let you go, um, is there anything that he has told you to tell everyone watching and people, you know, maybe siblings? He obviously he's cut off with everybody. Oh. Um, sure. unless unless you come because there is no telephone unless somebody visits him but now you've visited him and you've told the world that he's in good health you've told the world as well now that aside these t technicalities um, that everything is normal is there any other thing any information that he you might wish to use the opportunity before I let you go uh, tell the world of um, his uh, status well, now well um uh, Mazen Namdekano is a strong spirit, and um, he's not um, in any manner shaken. Uh, he's still in strong. He's still he's strong in his convictions, and um, still remain firm in his belief. So he asked me specifically to tell people to at least thank people for his for the overwhelming support, his millions of fans, and also solidarity stream so far because uh, we discussed about solidarity of people. So he said that you is eternally grateful to them and that you continue to pray for him so that this too will come to pass because I know he'll be, he has not committed any offense to law to deserving of what um, is travel is passing through now. So he said that you extend his um, heartfelt gratitude to people, to his supporters, so millions of fans who are daily praying for him and who are, who are clamoring for his release. So, and that you remain resolute. And, and consistent in that request. Thank you so much, and I'm blessed. Thank you very much, Baris De Jofo. That's a very fine place to leave it. And everyone, thank you very thank much you so for much. joining us in this brief conversation. It's now about 14.53 here in Nigeria. And uh, I will say thank you once more for your time. And as you go thank on you Monday, so again, send our regards to him and send our regards sure. to your team. And we say thank you sure. once more for being part of this broadcast this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. If I need a phone. Again, thank you. So everyone watching me, I just had this conversation now. This was a live conversation with Barista Ifanye Jofo, who is the lead council uh, indigenous people of Biafra and also the lead council to Mazi and Namdekanu. Again, million, uh, I know many of you watching, this was live. Those of you asking on the comment section if it's live or it's been recorded, no, it's not live. It is now um, six minutes to three o'clock afternoon here in Nigeria. And again, I would say thank you for being part of this conversation. We might see ourselves later in the day when I uh, come in for my street parliament in the evening. I am still your host, Mazi Ezeke, and I say, Peace out.